Jack started his acting career in Durban, performing on the uh, community theater circuit and was while studying law. After graduating in 93, he served in the police service for nine years, performing duties in the rapid response and crime prevention units. Jack continued performing in film, TV, and stage productions in the course of his career um, uh, in law enforcement. In 2002, Jack moved to, a, to pursue a career as a professional actor and has since performed in numerous TV and film productions. But the one that makes me feel as if I have a long-standing friendship with this guy is his outstanding role as Rajesh in Isidingal. Now, this is certainly a man of many talents. So yes, ladies, in my eyes, this Jack is definitely a Jack of all trades. So today, Jack is here to help us out with our Nissan X-Trail review because he drives an X-Trail. So welcome, Mr. Jack Dev Narayan. Thanks so much for having me. You're very much welcome. It's an honor. Um, Jack, the new Nissan X-Trail is more intelligent, efficient, and more beautiful than ever before, offering the same torque with less bulk. It packs a good punch and is uh, now even safer than any of its predecessors. Jack, why did you choose to uh, buy the Nissan X-Trail? I've always been a fan, and in fact, uh, historically, this is now my third Nissan X Trail. So I've I've always enjoyed the um, the engine characteristics, like the the drive height, the visibility, uh, the safety features are are present, and you can feel them. But it's not obtrusive in any way. I also like um, this particular engine, and I have to mention also this is my very first automatic transmission. Normally, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a manual fan, um, you know, you, you optimize the use of the engine and the rev range, but certainly I think the automatic transmission is refined to the extent that certainly I don't expect to see too many manual shifts coming, you know, on the showroom floors in a few years' time. Um, there's, there's so much of power, and I, I like the fact that it's an economical engine, and, you know, you've got, the, um, you, you've got a digital display that gives you an idea of, um, how your, your your drive habit is actually um, working the engine. So you can monitor the economy of the engine depending on how you drive. And also the, the distribution of the weight and the power uh, um, you know, around the chassis uh, is also giving you feedback. I like getting feedback because, um, you know, as a biker as well, you get very used to what your tires are telling you. If, you, if you're connected to the road, your tires are talking to you, that's, that's feedback. When you're looking around you, uh, visually you can see what's around you, that's feedback. You can feel through your hands on the steering wheel what the car is doing, that's feedback. So I'm all about feedback. And I think the, the X-Trail has given me that package um, in, in a very comfortable, stylish, uh, you know, executive SUV kind of feel. So um, that's why I'm very, very pleased with it. That's awesome. And uh, a more streamlined design as a whole new level of an executive, as you were saying earlier, on touch to the SUV. Uh, what do you like most about the design? Is there anything that stands out for you? Yeah, I think the weight distribution is revolutionary. I, I think it's a huge step up from the, from the pre previous models of the X-Trail. Um, and you can feel that, you know, the way it balances itself off and the engine characteristics, I think for me, are the standout features. And mm. um, every time I get into the vehicle, I can feel its spaciousness and comfort. And it's, um, it's definitely a step up. And it's, it's a winner as far as that range is concerned. Great. Additionally, the Nissan X-Trail adheres to Nissan's uh, safety shield approach and provides comprehensive driving uh, protection thanks, uh, thanks to the electronic brake force distribution. What safety features are outstanding uh, in your experience driving this vehicle? And remember, we're talking, I know you are a male and men handle their cars differently, but uh, uh, let's, let's, let's put a female, they have, it's your wife, has she driven the car? Yeah, yeah, she drives it uh, on a regular basis and she enjoys it as well. Okay. And I think what, what I've always appreciated, you know, also being a biker, um, the way you would ride a super bike is different to the way you would ride a cruiser. Mm. And that's because it's designed, engineered differently and the engine does different things. So I can say the same thing then about driving um, a sports sedan 
or driving an SUV. Mm. They're engineered differently, the engine does different things, and therefore it demands um, a, a different approach by the driver. So driving an SUV for me means enjoying the, the drive height, better visibility. You're not chasing anything because you're safer and you can see what's going on around you uh, all the time. Mm. So I think the, um, the thing that makes it um, helpful, and I think the, um, what my wife enjoys most about driving the, the, the X-Trail is the fact that she feels safer. And when somebody feels safer, yeah. you are automatically driving in, in a more responsible manner. And she's, um, you know, you have, you have that sense of comfort and control. And it's, uh, it's, it's what Nissan is able to provide with this X-Trail. And it certainly uh, appeals to, to my wife. And I imagine that there are many women out there who will respond to the same kind of feeling that, uh, that an SUV like this would give them. Absolutely. We like the height as well. The ground clearance is something that's, that's you know, very attractive to us, especially now with these SUVs and uh, double cabs that are so much easier, you know, with the um, automatic uh, transmission, it's so much more easier to drive. So, yeah. Have you done any road trips with the X-Trail, um, Jack? Not in a while, unfortunately. Uh, my last long trip was uh, Joburg to Durban and back. And uh, I've done some trips to, you know, to Blum. So we're talking, you know, upwards of um, three hours. Um, and, you know, it's, it's um, for me, the kind of trip that you want to take in a vehicle like this. Okay. Um, it's, so you, you, you're feeling safer, you're feeling engaged, you've got the comforts and the controls. Um, you know, you can set your, your speedo cruise and you've also got the, um, the visibility to help you just check what's going on around you. Um, monitoring your environment, checking the weather, and you know that's another feature that's hugely important to me. Mm. Uh, when the road is wet, the rain is coming down. Uh, do you have sufficient faith in the handling of your vehicle that uh, you know you've got you've got enough control so that um, you know you're you're not going to skid off the road. Your your engine is taking in all those factors and it's making those calculations at a rapid rate and you know changing the characteristics and the handling of the vehicle so that's also another great reason why i think um, the suv is offering so much more especially for those long trips absolutely and um what about space leg room uh you know um, comfort for uh, the the rear seating uh kids yeah i uh, i love the fact that now my kids are mostly grown up <laughs> and um, they are self-sufficient, independent. They have their own wants, their own needs, their own demands, grievances, and personalities. And with that, uh, they, you know, they, they demand their space. So having the two of them in the back seat of the X Trail is more than sufficient for them to keep out of everybody's way, to sit around them, surrounded by their snacks and their entertainment. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's it's just a, a pleasure cruise because. Uh, there is more than enough space to keep everybody happy. Uh, that's awesome. Check tell us a little bit about your bike riding. And that's a, that's a market that we want as a magazine to tap into. We were talking a bit earlier about how women fear, actually not fear, a little bit intimidated, I would say, by, um, you know, riding a bike. I mean, I've done in, intense research uh, with regard to, bringing on a portal uh, that offers advice for women. And we are in, in, in talks with Harley Davidson, um, Alberton and uh, KTM. But tell us what your, uh, give us your opinion about women riding bikes. It's a growing market and I think it needs to be encouraged and supported in every possible way. Um, traditionally, you have the, the world of motoring and motorbiking has been dominated by men, uh, dominated by male thinking, and men like to hold on to that as their, their personal domain, and they work very hard sometimes to, to keep women out. Uh, let, let's, let's look at how that uh, is perpetuated in different ways. So when you're manufacturing a vehicle, you need to look at who are the guys who are designing this, and who are the engineers behind it, and what's the thinking about you know, what is comfortable and what is um, 
a layout that uh, should be catering for men. You design the vehicle and now you're ready to bring it to the showroom floor. Who's advertising it? How are they advertised? Why is it that you'll see um, a, a beautiful woman draped around a, a, a vehicle when you're trying to sell that car? Who is it aimed at? Are you presenting a woman with that car in order to sell it to more women? Or are you presenting a beautiful woman with that car in order to appeal to the attention of men? So at every level, um, men have dominated the thinking, the designing, the perceptions, um, the entire industry of, um, of motoring. And it applies in very much the same way to the world of biking as well. And for me, the acid test of whether a woman is made to feel part of the process or not is take your car for a service or walk into a showroom floor as a woman and say, um, this is what I'm looking for. Can you help me, please? And generally, what you are going to get is uh, a superior and patronizing tone and you will have people assuming that this woman doesn't know what she's talking about. She doesn't know what she wants. Yeah. She doesn't have the language to describe what she needs. And she is then treated as such. Mm -hmm. The assumption is that you're a woman, you know nothing. I'm a man and I know everything. And in fact, I'm going to help you. Yeah. I'm going to be very nice and I'm going to help you only because I think you're a child. So that's the kind of patronizing attitude we need to address. We have to confront it. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, we have to recognize that women are, are more independent now than ever before. Yeah. And they need to be uh, given an equal space yeah. in uh, placing and presenting their demands about what it is they want in vehicles, yeah. um, in how advertising is, is managed, and in the way that they're treated when they're actually in the place where it counts most, which is mm. on the showroom floor. Absolutely, Jack. I mean, Women Talk was born out of that very initiative of educating and empowering women to make their own choice when buying cars. And that is why we are here to serve the woman. And it's not a thumb suck. Okay, it is a, it's a demographic, it is a statistic that have been researched into that we are 85 this, uh, uh, contributing decision makers in the South African market and we buy 54% with our very own hard earned money, we're buying that vehicle, 54% of women are buying vehicles. So we should be elevated, we should be respected and knowledge is yep. power and that is what we are to do and to serve and we will get it right. Yep. It's a challenge every day. I'm sometimes the only female um, uh, uh, media representative at uh, at launches and um, you know that type of thing but at the end of the day we're getting there and it's with help of our male counterpart it is our male counterpart that will assist us in uh, providing this platform and, and educating we most of our male counterpart firstly they all come from a woman number one number two they all there's some most of them are married to a woman uh, most of them have daughters that are women so it is it's in their best interest in any case to help us with this uh, initiative we, we must be quite clear about this as well is, is that there are a number of dealerships that have specifically geared themselves um, to, to making women, women clients, women customers, uh, women drivers feel a lot more welcome and feel included in the experience of their brand. And I think that's to be applauded. Um, and I think globally, it's, it's certainly um, a growing trend. Yeah. The, I'd just like to point out the difference though, is that why are we doing this? Mm. Why is there a shift towards empowering women and making women heard in this. Are we doing it because we believe fundamentally that women need to have an equal say? Or are we doing this because we'd like to sell you this car and take your money as quickly as possible? There is a big difference. And I think in, to go back to your earlier question in the world of motorbiking, there's a whole lot more that needs to be done uh, I, I know from personal experience that Harley Davidson does a lot to empower women riders. Mm. And um, 
you have some of the other motor motorcycle manufacturers as well that that have the open days, um, that have the outrides that include um, rides for, for women as well. And what they are being, what they are trying to do is to graduate the the wife or the girlfriend who's used to sitting on the pillion in the back uh, to giving her her, her own first-hand experience of riding her own bike. And that's happening more and more. I absolutely encourage that. And I think um, Harley, more than other manufacturers, have succeeded in that effort. It's just, it's, it's not a difficult thing to do and it's not difficult to encourage. And I would really love to, to, to get some feedback from you, hopefully after this interview. Uh, some of your viewers can, can tell us um, whether they are excited by the prospect of riding a motorbike for themselves on their own, owning their own motorbike, uh, does it scare them? Does it excite them? Would they ride if, if they were sitting on a motorbike and they were riding pillion? Or would they be excited by riding their own bike? And if, if you can put that out as a survey, I would love to know the results. And I absolutely love to uh, provide those results for you because we are definitely uh, joining forces with the right people to to bring this the, this exciting new um, uh, uh, um, opportunity for women to ride their own bikes because it is. Uh, uh, in terms of fuel and economy uh, and, and that type of an influence in terms of this day and age, it, it's something to look at. I mean, most women, it's just them traveling alone to work. So why not? If it's, it's, a, it's yeah. you know, it's so the, the initial intimidation of getting onto that bike. I know with the surveys we've already conducted, it's that, that, uh, that, 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 um, uh, you know, prompts the fear. But other than that, yes, we will, we, we, we are looking the next year, we are definitely going to have, um, uh, a platform for um, women to visit our, um, our our site, get educated, and even test drives via our um, our dealerships, our, our motorbike dealerships, and make them feel comfortable. On the 8th of February, which was actually my birthday this year, uh, was Harley Davidson's one-year birthday in Alberton, and we've joined forces with them to bring workshops for women. So th that's very, and, and with that's lockdown, great. everything went on hold, but it's, it's definitely something that we're going to I'm, I'm happy to hear that your birthday is on the 8th of February mine is on the 9th oh <laughs> <laughs> okay that's great we're great people <laughs> Jack you know yes. what tying tying with what we talked about and this is the one reason I asked you to please I haven't really interviewed many um a, a, celebrities or um, public profiles for women talk we focus on the public uh, um, profiles and the our own internal motoring woman celebrities, Masha Mayaba being one of them. She was actually the first dealer principal 24 years ago, first black female dealer principal in South Africa, and she took away our MFC uh, role model of the year award last year. So those are the type of people we really focus on to elevate our motor, uh, motoring people or women in, in South Africa. But the reason I actually chose you um, and, and Devi Sankri Governor and Logi Naidu is because even the male um, counterpart uh, in South Africa in terms of motoring uh, or in other industries, actually in other industries, campaign for women rights and, and I think that ties in so um, um, profoundly and strongly with what we're trying to achieve. So Jack, I've recently seen on your Facebook profile that the acting industry is defined um, by its lack of, I, can't, I don't know if legislative regulation is the right words to use, but um, it makes our actresses vulnerable to exploitation and, and abuse. And I don't, like I said, I'm, 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 just, I'm just taking this from what I've seen on your, uh, on, on yeah. your Facebook post, but, um, you know, abuse and, and all of those things. And since we are all about women empowerment and I'm all about women um, empowerment, your post is deeply disturbing to me. Um, to all of us at Women Talk when I discussed this interview with them. So can you maybe tell us more about what's going on and also perhaps we can highlight this issue with our readers and followers because we have a pretty niche market. We have about 300,000 yeah. women that, um, that are high profile ladies uh, and women that are buying cars off our site and I'd like them to know what's happening with their fellow fellow women in other industries. So yeah, please. absolutely. <laughs> the, um, the, the, the bigger context I think is the global discussion around the Me Too movement 
um, a few years ago, one of Hollywood's greatest, uh, most famous uh, film producers, Harvey Weinstein, was uh, was was caught because it, his his um, his behavior towards female performers was exposed. He would offer them leading roles in some of his best movies, and in exchange, they would have to make themselves available to him. Uh, you know, he would. Um, he would grope and he would fondle and in fact in some instances he would rape and in fact he's just been found guilty of rape in a criminal court in the US. Uh, what it did do was that it led an investigation into a sexual misconduct and sexual exploitation in the industry and while the investigation opened up in the US, film and TV production sectors around the world started to introspect and we found in South Africa that it was no less prevalent. So we found that there were producers, there were directors, there were actors who were involved, uh, who were victims and survivors of and perpetrators of that kind of sexual misconduct and sexual exploitation. Um, and with all of that, we're as the South African Guild of Actors and I, um, I, I work there in my capacity as chairman of the organization but we found that the more we talk about it the more people are coming forward which is actually what we want we need to shine um, a spotlight into our industry to take a very close look at the kind of toxic masculinity that perpetuates sexual harassment in the industry uh, sexual exploitation and we need to expose and we have got to offer support to the survivors. You have some very strong advocacy groups in the industry that are working very hard to develop protocols uh, for our industry and every once in a while uh, it'll come up where there is um, somebody's got a production and they want to cast people in the role or in several different roles and that's exactly the uh, the post that you were referring to on Facebook where it, it came out that there was a producer who was looking to, uh, you know, to audition women and put them into the roles of um, production that he was putting together. But he was quite explicit in stating that the only form of payment that he would take from these performers is that he wants to date them, he says. So this was now exposed on Facebook. And obviously, as a leader within the sector, we have to come out very strongly and condemn in the strongest possible terms the conduct of this person. So certainly it's something that we are uh, pursuing as part of our agenda in Saga and we have helped to develop the industry protocols in order to deal with sexual harassment. It does continue up until this day and until we confront it as society, not just women but men being vocal in confronting this and in taking um, a strong and unforgiving stance against it. Um, and un until we actually do that, it will persist because as you know, um, the, the way people like to excuse this kind of um, revolting behavior is by saying, well, it was just a joke, wasn't it? Why are you taking this so seriously? You know, why are you reacting in this way? Um, you know, aren't we allowed to joke as colleagues, as friends? And it's we've got to very send a very clear and strong message to people to remind them that this is not a joke, and this is not something that you joke about, and it is certainly not your place to defend yourself, saying, "Well, I was only joking." Um, it's it's one of those aspects of humanity generally that that we need to eradicate. Um, and and the men who are listening to this right now will know exactly the, the number of times that they have done this in their lives. And uh, to, to those of you, I'm reminding you, change your behavior now. It is inexcusable. Um, it will not be accepted. Uh, and it's, it's certainly not something that, uh, that you, you can think is you know just one of those things that we do as guys actually no it's not and to all those women out there who are listening and thinking i may actually be a victim of that 
please, I need you to talk about it. You need to talk about it to your, to your group of friends, your family, expose it. Um, you can confront this and you can be supported and you can heal. Absolutely. Um, Jack, and that, and I think um, you not being in the motoring industry, and we spoke about this earlier prior to um, us, uh, you know, starting up this interview, this, the last part of the interview is what means so much with your public profile and with you campaigning for the rights of women and them knowing that they do not have to tolerate this. They do not have to stand for it, irrespective of industry, um, uh, you know, that you, in business. other ways to get to the top and get to what you need and want. And the, the, the best way to do it is with your integrity and your self-respect in place. That's it. Well so said. Jack, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and most valuable contribution, Jack. We hope that Women Talk uh, initiatives will include you, which you spoke about earlier on as well, yes, in the future, because I am a fan not only of your work as Rajesh from Isidingo, <laughs> but um, also uh, of your work um, and your championing and campaigning for the rights and equality of women as a whole in South Africa. So thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, My we'll pleasure. speak thank soon. You. Good.